the mushroom, Ricky? Oh, look, he's white. Are we born with some type of basic knowledge? Or do we learn what we know from experience? How do our minds work to produce complex and creative ideas? These were questions that John Locke sought to answer. John Locke, now on the philosophical roots of psychology. René Descartes, the famous French rationalist, claimed that people are born with innate knowledge. In addition, he proposed that sure knowledge of the self and the world are achieved through rational and logical inquiry. During the 17th and 18th centuries, some British thinkers opposed Descartes' views on the nature of cognition. These philosophers were known as the British empiricists. They proposed that the contents of cognitive processes depend on sensory experience. Sensory experience provides the primary information for all knowledge. In addition, they attempt to identify a few basic principles that could explain mental functioning. John Locke, born in 1632, was one of the most influential British empiricists. John Locke was born of a small landowner and attorney. At age 20, he entered Oxford University. He eventually taught Greek, rhetoric, and moral philosophy at Oxford. At the time, moral philosophy was a label for the discipline that explored many of the issues that psychology addresses today. At Oxford, Locke met Robert Boyle, one of the founders of modern chemistry. Locke learned from Boyle that physical objects were made of extremely small corpuscles. Eventually, this had a strong impact on Locke's view of how the mind works. In addition to Locke's more scholarly works, he wrote an edition of Aesop's Fables, which was intended to help children learn Latin. Locke died in 1704. British empiricism proposed that the contents of cognition basically come from sensations and reflections on sensations. Locke advocated this position. He proposed that ideas can be rearranged and organized by the cognitive processes of thinking and reasoning. Locke believed that how the mind works is innate, but what the mind works with comes from experience. Locke proposed that sensory stimulation produces the raw products of cognition, but the mind operates on those raw products to produce simple ideas. Simple ideas are the atoms of sensory experience. Simple ideas are formed directly from sensory stimulation. An example of a simple idea is the notion that a cookie is sweet. Simple ideas then become the basis for the creation of more complex ideas. This cognitive process occurs through abstraction and reasoning. An example of a complex idea is the notion that the perception of sweetness involves multiple physical and psychological processes. Locke felt that these cognitive processes are inborn in the human mind. He believed that cognition can arrange simple ideas in an infinite number of ways. An interesting and important perceptual principle that Locke proposed is the condition between primary and secondary qualities of physical objects. What distinguishes these qualities is the type of mental experience they produce. Primary qualities have the ability to produce ideas that correspond to the actual characteristics of the physical object, such as shape or quantity. Secondary qualities have the ability to produce ideas that do not directly correspond to the actual physical world. Such qualities produce ideas such as color or warmth. The interesting psychological point here is that some perceptions reflect the physical world while other perceptions are a more direct result of intervening cognitive interpretations. What is important here for psychology is that Locke proposed that these subjective cognitive interpretations can be studied objectively. A final important contribution of Locke is the notion of association. Some associations are based on natural relationships. For example, 
Feeling contented can be naturally associated with living a meaningful life. However, Locke used the principle of association to mainly explain cognitive errors. Some associations are created due to chance or mistakes. These associations lead to errors in cognition. For example, a person who experiences pain while having a tooth filled may view the dentist as bad. Later, empiricists would further develop the idea of association as a general principle of cognition. Why is Locke important to psychology? First, he famously proposed that at birth, the human mind is a blank slate, or tabula rasa. That is, we are born with no knowledge of the self or the world. This fits nicely with the behaviorist perspective, which proposes that what we know comes from the environment. Thus, Locke provides a philosophical basis for modern classical behaviorism. Also, Locke provides a 17th century model of how mental processes operate. Contrary to more modern empirically based models, Locke's model of cognition is based on the rational analysis of common experience. The model begins with sensory experience. For Locke, experience is essential and primary. Cognitive processes then operate to produce complex ideas and associations. In this sense, we could say that Locke represents a rudimentary cognitive psychology.